in an SBS compression, again, we're looking at the base of the sphenoid and the base of the occiput. What has happened here from some sort of trauma, uh, very often with car wrecks, is there's a direct compression. There is no axis here. This is not an axis. This is just designed to show you that there's a compression between the uh, sphenoid and the occiput. So the SBS is basically locked up. So lots of times, these are your patients that you just have great difficulty in palpating any sort of motion whatsoever. Um, sometimes you'll get in your vault hold, you can't feel much, you might switch to your front occipital hold or your becca hold and uh, try and palpate motion that way from the side and you still just can't get much motion. Uh, those are your folks that have the SBS compression. Really not much to show here except that there's just no motion. You just can't get good motion at all. So as we conclude, I just want to run back through each of the strain patterns. First, and I'll show you how that might look on your hands. So first, we talked about a torsion. We talked about a torsion being our first physiologic um, uh, dysfunction, and there was one AP axis, and we had the sphenoid and the occiput turning in opposite rotations around that axis. So I will show you all of these as a right. So a, a right torsion would feel like your index and your pinky finger on your right hand are coming back towards you. Right torsion. That would be left, but right. So you feel the greater wing of the sphenoid is more superior. And sometimes we call this our six shooters. Pew, pew. Okay. The next dysfunction we talked about was the side bending rotation. And as you'll remember, we had one AP axis and two vertical axes. And we had the sphenoid and the occiput rotating in opposite directions around their respective vertical axes and dropping to the same side on the AP axis. So in our right side bending rotation, what we found is that we felt as we felt fullness as the greater wing and the squama on the right side moved apart from each other around the uh, vertical axes, and then we felt a moving inferior as they both dropped down around that AP axis. So we felt a fullness on the right and a dropping on the right in the right side bending rotation. Then we moved on to our non-physiologic strains, and we talked about our vertical strain. So we said when the base of the SPS was coming, excuse me, the base of the sphenoid was moving superior, and we had our two transverse axes. Remember, these were the same axes as we used for flexion and extension, except here the sphenoid and occiput moved in the same direction. A superior vertical strain felt like the patient was nodding inferiorly, and an inferior vertical strain like the patient was nodding superiorly. And then we talked about our lateral strains, our lateral strains where we had the two vertical axes, okay, and we had them moving in the same direction. So as we palpated, this was our right, our right lateral strain, our parallelogram head, the greater wing of the sphenoid on the right was more superior, and of course our left. And SBS compression, which had minimal movement. We will review these again in class and have you palpate them in the PTR. Thank you.